Defend yourself against DDoS attacks by hiding your true IP address with ExpressVPN. And visit my custom link expressvpn.com slash gillymaster in the description to find out how you can get an extra three months free. It's been two years since we got a new helicopter in GT Online. The last one was of course in the Kaiprico Heist, that was the Annihilator Stealth. And we of course know how that went down. Well today I'm going to be going over the Konata helicopter that's brand new in the Colonel Enterprises DLC. And the best way I can describe it before we even get into the actual info is just the bare minimum. The least amount of effort and originality possible put into a helicopter. So this helicopter can be bought for $2.4 million as a normal price, or you can complete the final ULP mission as the host to unlock the trade price for it, which will bring it down to $1.8 million. You also need to own a hangar to be able to buy this helicopter. If you don't own a hangar, you're not going to be able to buy it, so that's another expense on top of that. It's not just a Pegasus vehicle that you can call in. It does have some upgrades you can put on it, like armor, engine, handling. There's some cool liveries, including a GTA 4 throwback livery with the Higgins Heli Tours one. That's the one that I put on it. But for some reason, we can't put countermeasures on this new helicopter. Why is that? Why are we getting a helicopter that we have to store in the hangar, that we have to take up one of our 20 slots that, for whatever reason, we don't get increased at all? We don't get any new storage for the hangar. For a helicopter that does not have countermeasures available to put on it. They went out of their way to add countermeasures for the Sparrow helicopter that didn't used to have them in this update. And in the same DLC, they add in another helicopter without countermeasures. Like, I just don't understand, man. You're telling me they couldn't put in at least a little bit of effort to add them for this new helicopter? It doesn't make any sense. But Gilly, it's meant to be a civilian helicopter. Civilian helicopters aren't meant to have countermeasures. Okay, then why do the Alpha Z1 and Howard planes have access to flares and shaft countermeasures? Those are stunt planes, not combat planes. That logic makes no sense. And it's fucking GTA for crying out loud. The city's a war zone. Give us the option to protect their aircraft. So no countermeasures on this helicopter. So how does the armor hold up without them then? It doesn't at all. It goes down to just one homing rocket. Or three explosive rounds, so it's basically a sitting duck in the air. The only way you can call this helicopter in is through the personal aircraft menu. You can't spot it in next to you like you can with the Buzzard or the Sparrow, or even any other agency helicopter like the Super Velito that you can call into the CEO menu. So right there, it just loses basically all forms of utility. Why would you ever waste your time spawning this helicopter in, where you then have to drive to the spawn location to fly it over something like the Hunter, which is weaponized, way more tankier, and it also has countermeasures. There's just no contest. And if you really needed a four-seater helicopter, just replace the Hunter with the Akula then. Still gonna be a way better option. Also, more proof that this helicopter had so little effort put into it. It has sliding doors on the side of it, or at least they look like they should be able to slide. They're stuck open. You can't close them no matter how hard you try. They didn't even bother to animate the doors to be able to close when you get in. The Super Velita, which released in 2015 in the Executives and Other Criminals DLC, almost seven years ago to be exact. The sliding doors work fine on that helicopter, but not in a heli released in 2022. I know it's kind of a minor thing, but when you put everything together that was seemingly left out from this helicopter, you could just see that so little effort went into it. No countermeasures, no sliding doors, no armor, no imaginative usage for it with the CEO menu. It would have been nice if you could spawn this in with the CEO menu for free if you own it because they reworked a bunch of CEO business stuff in this update, but nope. You get a helicopter that is so bog standard it might as well have been released 9 years ago. The last thing that we need to go over is performance. That should be its saving grace if everything else is shit, right? But before I go over that, I want to preface by saying that helicopters have a weird thing where if you take them out of the hangar, they're actually faster than they would be if you just called them in. Not sure why that is, but you can see in this comparison of the Hunters here, the one that is brought out of the hangar is noticeably faster than the one that isn't. So what I did was perform two speed tests against the Hunter and the Sparrow. In one speed test, the Hunter and Kanata will be called in, and in the other, they will be from the hangar to show their full potential. The Sparrow, obviously, you can't put in the hangar, so that's just going to be called in for each test.
The new helicopter is fast, don't get me wrong, but it's not that much faster than the Hunter, which is overall just a much better choice. Or even the Sparrow, which you can spawn in next to you in an instant. There's just no reason to take out the Kanata. And the final performance test was to see how fast the Kanata could gain altitude compared again to the Hunter and Sparrow. It gains altitude at a rate which I would say is even faster than the Hunter is, but just like the speed test, it's not by very much and it doesn't make it worthwhile to use it over the Hunter or Sparrow that have way better perks and features aside from it. You could argue it's solely meant to be a transport helicopter, but at the same time you need transportation to get to the spawn point of the helicopter to even use it to begin with because you can't spawn it next to you. So what you'd most likely have to do is spawn in the Sparrow and then from the Sparrow spawn, you'd have to fly your Sparrow to the spawn location of the Kanata. At that point, why even bother with the Kanata? Why wouldn't you just use the Sparrow? Let me give you guys a quick concept I came up with that would make this helicopter a whole lot better. And it's not even giving it weapons or turning it into a Buzzard Mark II like I made that one video about. As awesome as that would be, it doesn't even need that to make it good. You just need four changes or so to make this helicopter really cool and useful as an agency style transport heli. Number one, make the sliding doors actually functional. Number two, give it bullet resistant glass, and this would make it unique and also the first of its kind for an air vehicle to have such a feature. And it's also why you'd want the sliding doors to be functional so you're protected while you're on the inside. Number three, let us spawn it in next to us through the CEO menu or whatever menu, honestly. It doesn't matter, just let us spawn it in next to us. Maybe they could even let us call ULP so we could spawn it in next to us, and that would fit with the lore because the Kanata is meant to be like an agency IA helicopter. And now that I think about it, that could have been a dope reward for completing all the missions being able to spawn in the helicopter next to us by calling him. And number four, give it a lock on jammer. It would make this helicopter one of the best ways to get around the map. It of course wouldn't replace the Sparrow because the Sparrow is armed, but it would basically be the safest way to use a helicopter in the entire game. Having a helicopter with a lock and a jammer would be so perfect. And I can't really think of a valid argument against having an unarmed helicopter with a lock on jammer. Anyone that argues against that would basically just be an asshole of pressure griefer that relies on lock on missiles. Let me know in the comments if you guys would be interested in a helicopter like this. And then of course you'd have the bullet resistant windows which would give it some protection from being shot at too both by AI and other players. Shit, if we had a helicopter that had all these abilities and we could spawn it in next to us, I'd pay like 3 to 4 million for it. And I know how much Rockstar and Take 2 love to make things really expensive in this game. Well, there you go. There's an expensive toy that I'm sure a lot of people would buy. And the armor can honestly stay the same. One rocket would be fine because it would have to be free aimed because it has a lock on jammer. This would be such a sick helicopter to use and would fit perfectly into the gameplay of going to each of your businesses and utilizing them more after these new changes that were implemented. But sadly, we are left with a helicopter that has nothing special about it aside from it having no tail rotor. Save your money. Do not waste it on the Kanata. It's not worth it. Trust me. Rockstar once again did the bare minimum for this helicopter, much like with the precision rifle, just a huge lack of creativity and originality, and just general fun. Sucks to see. If you enjoyed the video or found it helpful, feel free to leave a like, as well as subscribe to my channel for more GT Online content. I want to give a huge shout out to all my channel members for your support. If you'd like to become a member for some exclusive perks, you can either use the join button or the link that's down in the description. And as always, thanks for watching, and have a great day.